Hello listeners, this video discusses Anita Desai's Where Shall We Go This Summer? Anita Desai was born in the year 1937 and she is a living author. She is an Indian novelist. She is a professor of humanities at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Her works are shortlisted for the Book of Christ three times. She received a Sahitya Academy Award in the year 1978 for her novel Fire on the Mountain. She has received British Guardian Prize for her novel The Village by the Sea. She is on the advisory board of the Lalit Kala Academy and a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature in London. Her famous works include The Peacock, Voices in the City, Fire on the Mountain, Games at Twilight. Her novel In Custody was adapted as an English film which was directed by Ismail Merchant in the year 1993. The screenplay of this film was done by Shah Rukh Hussain and the film won President of India Gold Medal for Best Picture in the year 1994 and the film starred Sashi Kapoor Shabana Azmi and Om Puri. Let us see the themes focused in this novel, Where Shall We Go This Summer? This novel published in the year 1975 and it deals on the themes of incertitude, incertitude meaning a state of uncertainty or hesitation. It deals on alienation and there is an incommunication in marriage life. The novel significantly portrays alienation of a woman, a wife and a mother. Alienation is conditioned by society and family. The novel depicts a pattern of disappointment and disaster. This novel is the shortest existential novel. Let me say a small gist about existential novel. The principal proponents of existential novels are Jean Paul Sartre and Simon D. Bauer. These two theorists acted as a bridge between philosophy and literature to throw the individual into the world to face a metaphysical crisis which reveals moral existence. Existentialism is a philosophical movement that delivers that individuals create the meaning and essence of their lives as opposed to deities or authorities creating it for them. In simple terms, a relation to existence, especially human existence, like there is always a philosophy pertaining to what exists and thus it is known by experience rather than reason. In literature, existential themes can be found in the works No Exist, which is a play by Jean Paul Satter. Next, it is in the essay by Albert Camus. The name of it is The Myth of Sisyphus and Waiting for Godot, written by Samuel Beckett. In these literary works, we find characters engaged in pointless activities or waiting for other characters that never arrive. Reading this novel, we come across that this novel particularly has its intensity and depth. Let us now discuss the summary and analysis of this novel. This novel describes the cruelty and callousness of urban life. Callousness means insensitive and cruel disregard for others. Sita, who is a married woman, she is around 40. She hangs between marriage life and her self-fulfillment. The novel can be divided into five segments. First is pregnant Sita, desire to move to Monari. Then about Sita's father. Sita's kids interact with nature and the end. The story highlights the life of modern day technopolis and conservative village life. The difference between modern day and village life are two distinctive culture and breeds grounds for people and affect how they behave and what they value. 
Sita is the main character of this novel who is expecting a baby soon. She is a pregnant woman who does not want to deliver her newborn in the toxic surrounding of her city. She is frustrated how her other children have been spoiled by the luxuries and distractions of modern lifestyle. She also recollects her own childhood and simple upbringing. In the second part, Desire to Move to Monali, we see Sita wants her newborn to be immersed in the same values and natural beauty that she enjoyed as a child in her island village of Monari. Her husband, who is always against her wish to move to Monari because he has a conception that there won't be any nursing or healthcare facility to deliver his baby. He thinks that moving to Monari may risk her pregnancy. However, Sita is determined and moves with her children to Monari. On the island, Sita remembers her childhood days of fun and frolic. And we see about Sita's father. She remembers her father who used to bring her and her siblings to the island and narrates the stories about nature. He also enjoyed giving his speech about their country and its independence or freedom struggle. On one such occasion, there was heavy rain and the island got flooded with the deluge of rainwater. Sita was in danger of being drowned and then she was rescued by a stranger. That stranger eventually becomes her husband. Then the novel talks about kids' interaction with nature. At the island, she wants her children to immerse themselves in the same natural beauty and bounties. She takes them to the beach where they are mesmerized by the fish and seashells. She is also excited to see the kids interacting with nature. In Monari, she misses her husband. She wants her whole family to reap the benefits of simple lifestyle. She hates the hectic, fast-paced mechanical city life. And we also see in the end that her husband does not come to Monari. He all the time consoles Sita. To bring her children back to the city to get proper medical care before the birth of their new child. Eventually Sita accepts to bring her children back to the city life after a rejuvenating experience of the natural therapy in their island. These are the components involved in this novel. Sita awaits for her fifth childbirth. Her experience of a housewife and a mother accumulate in her deep anguish. She feels that there is no genuine happiness in her marital life because she realizes that she is hopeless and sensitive, cruel and alien to her own husband and children. Her own insanity drives her back to preserve the sense of sanity by escaping from her routine life in Bombay apartment. She wants to move to Manari, which is an island in the west coast. She is immature as she is longing for moving back to her island named Manari. We see her long-lasting torments in the novel. Sita never creates a bondage to her husband Raman and her own children because she is entirely out of the common code of life. She tells to her husband saying, What am I doing is trying to escape from the madness here. Escape to a place where it might be possible to be sane again. So this reference we can see that she mentions the life of Bombay and things about the life that she had in the past in Monari. Living in Bombay, she loses her grip on life and develops in mind uncertain and also develops unrealistic attitude towards life. Though she rebels against the birth of her fifth child, she do possess 
a want to protect her unborn child against the cruel atmosphere in where she is living. She also tries to abort her baby and eventually flies to island. She then moves to Monarni without her husband's acceptance or approval. She feels that the island of Monari is an island of miracles because her father has implemented many thoughts about this magical island. She believes that this island would make many miracles for her life in Bombay has grown tired of dullness and disappointment of her family. Therefore, she wants to seek her childhood as a place of her happiness again. In this island, she believes that this island may provide her a refuge camp safe from her family life, away from the humdrum life of Bombay. Going there, she also connects the changes, distortions and revelations between the present and the past in her middle age. Her longingness had no answers to her deep anguish. Rather, she finds herself like a jellyfish with strands on the sand bar, slowly suffocating and unable to survive on the sands of life. Slowly, she tries to take shelter in the island. She feels that the island may hold her baby safely. Subsequently, she experiences betrayals, confusion and thereby compromises led her to intense suffering. Though the island had no magic for her life, she had illusion that tramples her because she attends for a futile search for some purpose in life. Her anxiety, concern and pessimism produce emotional outbursts and she undergoes a search for an escape to be alive to her sensitivity. She believes that her arrival at Monari has given her a new life, a new awareness, a new consciousness. Often she has a question about marriage life. Thus there is a quote, what a farce marriage was all human relationship. At Monari, she visualizes the world of her dreams and once again intensifies her desire to recapture an experience, an excitement and an innocence. Her decision to move to Monari is a long unanswered grief that takes the title of this novel, Where Should We Go That Summer? Eventually, her decision to go back to the island of Manari after 20 years in her journey in quest for her lost innocence. In the novel, similar to Sita, there are many islanders who are also waiting for 20 years looking for something. Sita drifts her life mentally. She indulges in introspection, sometimes in retrospection of her unhappy marriage life. She is disgusted with her own life and her alienation. She permanently thinks about her relationship with her father. Thereby, she is unable to maintain a conformity with the established norms of society. She fails to communicate her reaction against every incident in life. She feels like a stranger longing for the life of that primitive world. Just after her marriage to Raman, she feels that she could not adjust or indulge in the house of her husband's parents. In the house, she feels like a subhuman. She feels that she has a suffocating existence in the same house. She fails to adopt herself to society. She then moves in a small flat and lives alone with her husband and children. In the apartment, her life is hardly better. Her privacy is disturbed. She struggles with the monotony of life. She could not begin to comprehend her boredom. Through the character of Sita, we see her life fills with agony. And the chain of unhappy incidents in Sita's life makes her a strong character. To refuse the dictates of society, 
she does not work on social principles but she desires to live like a saint a magician and as the original inhabitants of bonavi with moses and maryam when her husband raman comes to take menaka for admission to the medical college his arrival gives sita some sort of satisfaction but at the same time she comes to realize once again the cold actualities of life she feels that she had escaped from duties and responsibilities from order and routine from life and the city through the protagonist sita we see that her withdrawal is indicative of a need for love the free and unquestioning love when raman comes to monari to seek for menaka's admission sita weeps saying my father's death look after me but when she tells this he says that he has not come to look after her but his children at this stage she realizes and could not accept that she is a woman unloved in this novel we come across the components of emotion instinct feeling reason that occupies the central character of this novel this novel revolves around the main character sita her husband raman sita who's obsessed with a village life The novel begins as Sita was pregnant with her fifth baby. Sita and Raman live in Bombay in an apartment. She hates the urban life in Bombay. Sita as she is pregnant with her fifth child, she hates Bombay life. Especially as a pregnant woman, she had to frequently visit a doctor and a nurse to check the baby's growth. She hates the behavior and approach of the doctor and nurse. She wants to move away from Bombay to Manari, a small island where she lived there with her sibling and her father 20 years back. She is determined to give birth her fifth child in Manari. Sita could not spend her time with her husband Raman because Raman is a businessman. he could not make time to his wife sita is very proud of a mother of four children in her life love and affection from her husband is forbidden for her in her life love and affection from her husband is just like a nightmare sita behaves like a rude mother to her children and she always asks her husband that she has a wish to move to manari island because she always had a self exile in her search for identity eventually she moves to manari island to deliver her fifth child sita's father is a freedom fighter he is a respectable man and a person of high intelligence her father soon as he retires a person named dalwala is a farsi millionaire he offers him an island in manari in manari her father is considered as a magician because as he performs miracle and the villagers respect him the whole villagers respect and looks his genuinity but he finds that his children are not happy about him because his wife eloped with another man eventually he also end up having an affair with another woman and this issue in the family affects sita as she becomes an introvert years later when sita's father dies sita is taken care of her father's friend who is raman's father they take sita to bombay and they make her stay in a hostel Raman gets attracted of Sita's beauty and Sita eventually thinks that Raman's love for Sita is just a pity as Sita is an orphan without parents even after marrying Raman Sita feels alienated in Raman's family Sita who is depressed in her life is addicted to the habit of smoking 
she doesn't want to give birth her fifth child in Bombay because she has an assumption that Manari is a paradise and it should be a place to give birth her fifth child. Eventually, Sita moves to Manari with her two children. After 20 years, there she recalls the memories of her young age. There she meets a character named Moses. Moses is a person who takes care of Sita's father's house, who is just like a caretaker of the house. When Sita gets dropped in a car to Manari, Moses meets her. When he looks at Sita, he finds that Sita is depressed and recalls her young age appearance because she was a cheerful lady when she was young. I wanted to make a reference here. This novel is compared to Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse because this novel is divided into three parts, Monsoon 67, Winter 45, Monsoon 67. In Monsoon 67, the first part, here we see Sita's rebel to move to Manar. In the second part, Winter 45, Sita recollects the incidents that happened in her past life, the days that she spent with her father. And the third part, Monsoon 67, is a continuation of the first part, Monsoon 67, because here also we come across Sita's aggressiveness to move to Manar. And Sita's father is described as second Gandhi by the village people. And there are some followers for him. They are called as disciples. Each of them call him second Gandhi because he is involved in political freedom. Also, there are instances in the novel that portrays Sita's father's imprisonment as he is indulged in political activities and a spokesperson for political parties, he is arrested. All these are seen as impairments in Sita's upbringing. We see that Sita's life is unusual and strange. In an island in Manari, their house is named as Jeevan Ashram. Jeevan Ashram is named by Sita's father because Sita's father had a great desire to spend his whole life in peace in the island of Manari. We also come across Jeevan who is the brother of Sita. Both Jeevan and Sita did not get an opportunity to study. The novel particularly highlights the rebellion of Sita's to deliver her baby in Manari against her husband's approval. She takes her two children, Menaka and Karen, to Manari. And according to him, the village Manari is considered as a place of miracle. Menaka, her daughter, has an aim. Observing the life of Sita, she did not receive the love of her mother. And eventually, she expects the same love from her father that is also forbidden for her. After marriage, she expects love and affection from her husband. Unfortunately, she did not receive it. One day, Sita, standing in her balcony, she observes a scene of an eagle, which is attacked by many crows. Sita, who is affected by this incident, she takes a pop gun of her son and shoots the crows. But the following day, she sees that that the eagle is dead there. Sita takes this incident to her heart and she wants deliberately to narrate this story to her husband. But to her dismay, this never happened. And in every junction of Sita's life, she realizes that she could not even share a small bit of information or a small bit of feeling to her husband. And also feels that she is neglected by her husband Sita, who had an uncertain childhood, as her father had no care about Sita's life as he was involved in freedom struggle, he did not take any opportunity to look after his daughter. And during her childhood, she was informed by her brother Jeevan that 
that her father is involved with an affair with another woman and that is why there is a big communication gap between herself and her father sita always thinks about her past life and compares it with her present life she thinks that both her father and her husband are the same sita after her visit to manadi after 20 years finds the village as a pilgrimage but her child menaka a grown up daughter she sends a secret letter to her father ramen saying that she hates to live in manari and says that she has a great wish to pursue medicine she also has a fear that staying in manari will not have any opportunity of becoming a doctor and so she secretly sends a letter to her father asking him to pick her up soon as their father arrive the children become happy and looking at the happiness of her children sita dismisses herself and she believes that her own children are disapproving her the other children maya and monisha is as similar as sita they are also sensitive like her There is a scene in the novel where Sita feels depressed and feels that she is unnoticed by her husband. Once when Sita and Raman visit Ajanta and Elora caves, there the couple meets a foreign couple who seeks direction. Raman helps the foreign man to figure out the spot that they had to visit. Soon as the foreign couple leave, Raman and Sita have a conversation. When Sita was about to say something, Raman dejects her by talking about his perspective. He expresses what he feels looking at the foreign couple. After this incident itself, Sita feels that she is not heard by her husband. Eventually seven times in her life after marriage she is humiliated by her husband there is another incident similar to this when sita had a walk with her children to a hanging garden there she meets or there she observes a couple a muslim couple the man is older than the women she finds the love and affection that the couple shares after this when sita wanted to narrate the story to her husband and when she does it her husband ignores it she tries to narrate the story again so that her husband may identify that sita is longing for affection and the critics of this novel where shall we go this summer they compare the play of t h lawrence the women who rode away which stays as a reminiscent of this novel reminiscent meaning one thing that makes you remember of something now after the arrival of raman to manori he consoles sita that in urban that is in city there are many opportunities to pursue medicine for menaka sita realizing the practical reality of what raman told her she accepts to accompany him to bombay again so at the end of this novel sita moves to bombay again with her family to resettle with her family members hope this video helps if you have query please write it down on the comment and if you have any suggestion for discussion please write it down below thank you for your support and thank you for listening